Hello everybody and welcome back to another not applicable Formula 1 video. I hope that you're well. I hope you enjoyed the Belgian Grand Prix, if you could have enjoyed it in any way. I mean, we had a wonderful time on stream. We spent four hours talking absolute nonsense and thank you to everybody who got involved in the stream. But because there was nothing to really talk about from Belgium, I thought I'd take a little bit of a different direction. Rather than doing a race review, I thought we'd talk about the news that literally everybody has been hounding Toto Wolf with over the course of the weekend. When will George Russell, if George Russell, will be in a Mercedes? I wanted to delve into it. I wanted to look at it from three different perspectives. I'm going to look at it from Bottas's point of view. Has Bottas done enough to warrant that Mercedes seat over the last sort of this half of the season so far? And the rest of the season, how can I see his season projecting? Toto Wolff's perspective. You know, what more does George Russell need to do? Does Toto Wolf need to continue to, you know, really go on about George Russell at every single press conference? And then I'm going to look at it from George Russell's perspective. Could George Russell have done any more this season to actually warrant that Mercedes seat? So let's delve into it. Let's go for Valtteri Bottas to begin with. Um, when I was thinking about his season so far, these two words came to mind. First of all, unfortunate, but secondarily, quite underwhelming at times as well. And I want to explain that a little bit because he does currently sit fourth place in the Drivers' Championship, 108 points. But then, you know, you could say he's been a bit unfortunate. We've obviously got the DNF in Imola, which wasn't his fault, in my opinion. I think George Russell hit him pretty hard. But then you could argue, should he be racing a Williams in the first place? You've got Monaco's DNF, where, again, wasn't his fault. The wheel nut got stuck. He probably would have got a podium there. But then you've got the underwhelming aspect of it. You know, the fact that he's nearly 100 points behind the other title contenders that you would have this season. Hamilton on 202.5, Verstappen on 199.5, almost 100 points. And I think that gap will increase to 100 points over the next week or two. You know, it's been a tough season for Valtteri Bottas overall. You know, he has got six podium finishes in 12 races, which is very, very good. And that's what I mean underwhelming seems a little bit harsh but it's unfortunate that six podium finishes still makes him look a little bit not quite there and I think it's because five of those podium finishes have been third places you know he's been behind the likes of Lando Norris he's been behind the likes of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton consistently throughout the season and I think what it really comes down to is when he got the opportunity in those races where you know Hamilton had issues Verstappen had issues he never really stood up to the plate for me. Um, the main one that comes to my mind specifically, when it comes to the fact that he's on 108 points, only four points ahead of Perez, is the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. He really lacked pace all weekend. And when you've got a position where Max Verstappen is out of the race because he crashed into the wall, obviously not his fault, but you've got to take the opportunity when it's there. Lewis Hamilton messes up into turn one. You know, I think that next in line to win that race should have been Valtteri Bottas. If he's going to be a World Drivers' Champion one day, if he's going to show that pedigree that you need to have at the likes of Mercedes, at the likes of Red Bull, at this point in the season, I think he just should have been the one that was winning there. But it wasn't. It was Perez, it was uh, Vettel, and it was Gasly on the podium. And then Hungary it was just absolutely amateur from Valtteri Bottas. I think overall, if we look at that Hungary start, I, that's the only word that comes to mind for me. It was an amateur move. You wouldn't expect it from someone of his experience. You know, if it was a rookie driver and they made that mistake, got their braking distances wrong, hit into the back of Lando Norris, you'd be like, oh, it's their first season, blah, blah, blah. No, he's been in that Mercedes too long now. He knows his way around the grid. And I know that it's a little bit more difficult for Mercedes this season. They're actually having to race with the likes of Ferrari, McLaren and Red Bull for the first time in a little while. But still, that was just really, really amateur for me. And that's what I mean. He's had those ups and downs throughout the whole season. The entire season, he's been on a high. He's got lots of podiums. And then it's come crashing down to a low in the middle there. Then it came back up again for sort of Austria and Silverstone. He was very, very good. And then absolutely terrible in Hungary and pretty awful in Spa as well. You know, nothing really showing there for me. So... It's fair to say that in the middle of this season, it's been very mixed for Valtteri Bottas. And the problem is, the man who's leading the team does not look for mixed drivers. You know, he looks for continual consistency. He is a winner. He's come to Mercedes to win them championships, win them constructors, win them drivers. And that's what he's done over and over and over again. He is incredibly good at taking a team that has the DNA ready for winning 
bringing in the likes of Lewis Hamilton, bringing in the likes of Nico Rosberg, bringing in the likes of Valtteri Bottas and turning it into a winning team. But I think now Bottas is just starting to dip away. That's why people are starting to ask that question. And the problem is for Toto Wolff. He's heavily involved in both drivers' careers. Like Valtteri Bottas was his man. Three or four years ago, when Nico Rosberg left the team, it was Valtteri Bottas. He was Toto Wolff's driver, came into the team from Williams, brought him up through the ranks, and now he's in a Mercedes, you know, and he helped them win so many drivers' championships, so many constructors' championships. But George Russell is also Toto Wolff's next passion project. Brought him all the way through. He is part of the Mercedes Academy, you know. He will have a connection with George Russell in a way that he won't to any other driver on the grid. And that is the thing with Toto Wolff. We're not going to get a decision from him very, very soon. You know, he isn't going to let us know that one of the drivers was his favorite or not. It's going to be very, very close and very, very compact between these two drivers when it comes to this decision. And I think earlier on in the season, Toto Wolff probably wouldn't have had made that decision. I think, you know, when we're talking about Imola, he said that George needed to learn a lot when he had that incident with Valtteri Bottas. But then... This weekend, he said that a decision has been made. And I think George Russell has finally sort of pushed his hand a little bit. I know that he said that the decision was very tri very difficult. You know, if it was an easy decision, he would have made it much, much earlier. I think they're waiting for the right time. I think they're waiting for the right decision um, for Bottas's sake and for George Russell's sake with both of their teams moving forward. I think personally... That decision has been made. And for me, if it isn't George Russell, I think they'll have made a big, big mistake. But let's sort of go into why it might not be George Russell. So obviously they're saying, you know, both drivers deserve to be looked at and looked after in the best possible way. As I said, he is invested in both Bottas and Russell. He will do the best for both of them outside of this decision. So, you know, if one of them doesn't get that Mercedes seat, which one of them, you know, probably won't considering Lewis Hamilton has signed for another two years, if Lewis Hamilton continues on and one of them doesn't get that seat, he's going to make sure that, you know, they are still looked after. They're probably still in Formula One and they probably still get the seat that they'd like to secondarily to that Mercedes seat. So let's see what they're going to do moving forward. And for me, it comes down to George being outstanding this season. I'm going to delve into George in just one second. But the reason that I think it's maybe become a bit more of a decision for Toto Wolff is because he said that the decision came down considering other factors. And now when it comes to other factors in Formula One, you know, outside of racing on the track, what other factors might there have been? Possibly a financial factor, but I think personally it's the Lewis Hamilton factor. He has said that Lewis Hamilton is involved in the decision making does have an influence on what Mercedes do in the future. And personally, I think that other factor might have been Lewis Hamilton. Will Lewis Hamilton want a driver like George Russell coming into a team whilst he's, you know, by far and away the number one? He still wants to win World Drivers' Championships. You know, he's not too far away from winning a World Drivers' Championship this year. He's currently in the lead. Do I think he should be there? No. But, you know, at the end of the season, if he's got the most points, he wins. That is the way that Formula One is. So, I think he's still going to try and win championships over the next two or three years that he is in Formula One. But will Hamilton want a teammate coming in? We know that he is incredibly good friends with Bottas. We know that Bottas will do pretty much anything if he is told by Mercedes. Will George Russell do the same? So let's sort of delve into the third factor here. George Russell. He's coming into his third season now, halfway through his third season in Formula One. Sorry, Albon fans, but these were the three that came up together. And you can see a massive bump in both George Russell and Lando Norris's performance this year. I think it is that third season syndrome. When they've got that third season in Formula One, you do just see this uptick in performance. And Lando Norris's and George Russell's upticks have been phenomenal this year. Their performances have skyrocketed. He is still Mr. Saturday for me. You know, he doesn't get that opportunity in a Williams to fight with lots of other cars, but continuing getting that Mr. Saturday status is more than acceptable in that Williams car. He is continually in Q2 and has been in Q3 quite a few times over the course of the season, considering, you know, even the Williams uh, garage say that he is in pretty much the 17th fastest car. So we're looking at Austria and Silverstone and, of course, the P2 in Spa this weekend where he has got absolutely phenomenal pace out of that Williamson qualifying. We know he has raw pace and raw talent. 
Let's talk specifically about this weekend though. And this weekend for me really put the nail in the coffin for Valtteri Bottas because when it comes to wet weather racing, it is always classified as the great leveler. You know, rain is something that you can't forecast you can't prepare your car for weeks in advance. You are set with the rain, and it is the great leveler. The best drivers rise to the top, and if you are a rainmeister, you get this sort of extra badge of honour in Formula 1. And I think George Russell is showing that he can step up to that level and show his best ability whilst under the pressure of being in the rain. And we saw that this weekend. P2, he was the fastest Mercedes power unit. He only missed out on a couple of attempts to Verstappen. Now, Verstappen should have been well away from everybody else in the field. He was absolutely phenomenal. Similar, Lando Norris didn't qualify. And I think Lando Norris probably would have outquired George Russell if he would have got the lap in. But even so, Jensen Button said this was one of the best laps he's ever seen in his life. And when you've got a former world champion like Jensen Button coming to the Williams team and saying... Look, that lap was absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't have probably done a similar lap to what he's just shown. So it's just that George Russell has this raw pace. He has everything that he needs in that car to show off his outstanding qualifying ability. I think the problem is if George Russell doesn't get the move this window, we then start to think about his racing intelligence just a little bit. You know, when he's in and amongst it, when he's in and amongst a pack of other cars, can he hold his nerve? He's shown it a couple of times this season, but he doesn't get the ability to show it week in, week out. I think that's the main thing that I've seen from Lando Norris this year is when the chips are down, when he's put under pressure, he's still performing. He's still coming out with results. Can George Russell still do that when he's in a midfield to upper tier car? That's something that we haven't seen and possibly was one of the question marks over George Russell. I know that we've seen it in F2. Obviously, he's been a champion in other formulas, but that race intelligence is just something that you get from continually being in and amongst it. You know, driving, defending from other drivers, attacking other drivers, knowing when to go and when to not. And Imola, we kind of saw that, right? He did make the mistake. He went onto the grass and hit Bottas. Is that something that we would see from a Lando Norris, from a Sergio Perez, you know, someone who's got that race craft, lots of races in and amongst the midfield pack? I'm not so sure. So finally, the reason that I think George Russell is an absolute guarantee for Mercedes is next year, they're going to have to future-proof Mercedes in some way. Now, Valtteri Bottas is not old. Valtteri Bottas could go on for another five, six, seven years in Formula One, and I wouldn't be surprised, you know. But when you're looking at the likes of Red Bull with Max Verstappen, McLaren with Lando Norris, Ferrari with Charles Leclerc, we're looking at those drivers all coming through. They're a very similar age to one another, and they are the future world champions of Formula One. These are the guys that are going to be battling for titles, constructor championships in six or seven years time. They're going to be the guys that are on the grid, are the most experienced guys out there, and are going to be fighting for the highest accolades that they can, you know most race wins in a season, most points in a season. Those guys are going to be going for those kind of accolades when it gets to that time in Formula One. And Mercedes need to have their own one of that. They don't have a driver right now that can take them through and battle with the likes of Max Verstappen, Leclerc and Norris five years down the line. Everyone else is preparing for that second move. You know, in 2022, the regulations are changing. They're going to come through. Every single other team has got a young driver that they can mould around that new car and help to build that new car alongside. Mercedes don't have that at this moment in time. And that, I think, is the real reason that George Russell has to go to Mercedes now. And Mercedes can't actually give it another year. I don't think that they can, they can hold out. I think if George Russell holds out in Williams for another year, he probably looks elsewhere later on, you know. Does Daniel Ricciardo leave McLaren and George Russell steps in there? Does Carlos Sainz move on at Ferrari? I know that Mick Schumacher is supposed to take that seat. Could George Russell take that seat? Uh, Sergio Perez moves on at Red Bull. Maybe Pierre Gasly doesn't want to move up to the Red Bull senior team again. George Russell comes in, says, look, Mercedes aren't giving me a seat. I'll take that second seat and I'll fight Max Verstappen for titles. I think it's now or never for Mercedes and they need to make that decision soon. And even Caputo said after the qualifying session, if Toto's not made his decision, 
to put George in a Mercedes then today should have done it for him like there, there is nothing more for me that George Russell can show it's the only thing that I'm worried about is that race intelligence battling in a pack and understanding that race craft that you can only build up by having races in and amongst that pack and he needs those races as soon as possible so as you know the deal should be done by Toto Wolf. It's just heavily dependent on whether they are going with Hamilton. And I think Hamilton personally would prefer Bottas as a teammate. I think that if Hamilton gets to choose, then it will be Bottas. And I think if Mercedes get to choose, then it will be George Russell. So it kind of depends on who is bigger at this moment in time. Is Hamilton bigger than the future of Mercedes is winning now with Hamilton more important to Mercedes than future proofing for five years down the line and I think that's the real big question that we have here but let me know in the comments below what do you think is George Russell ready for a move to Mercedes is Valtteri Bottas going to get moved on do you think they're going to go with Bottas or George Russell? And if they do go with Bottas, what do you think their reasoning is behind that? Do you think George Russell will wait another year at Williams for a Mercedes seat? Because I am not quite sure. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will be live again this weekend. Obviously, we're in the Netherlands. I've got a video coming out on Friday. We've got the pre-race preamble. We'll be live for qualifying, live for the race day. Hopefully, we'll actually have some Formula 1 racing for you to watch. But... I'm going to leave you there. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.